Time now for the Cliff Bar Extended Highlights. Stage 18 in the Tour de France with our live coverage brought to you by Viking. We're looking out across to Spain here today, but the race stage in France is the final day of the mountains. We're on stage 18. We go from Lourdes to Otakam. And the man with all the pressure, this is his biggest day so far in his cycling career. Lourdes is the start town. Geico stage map looks like this today, all the way through the mountain stages of the Tour de France. It's a bit of a circuitous route. As the crow flies, the finish not that far from the start town, but Lord have mercy. There's a couple of giant climbs before we get to the final monstrosity, the obisque, and a new climb never used in the Tour de France before, the Col de Spandel, and the organizers have repaved the descent to make it passable for the peloton. The good news is it's not nearly as far from the obisque to the beginning of Hotakam. So there's an extra category one climb instead of the valley road where things had a tendency to come back together in the past and a big peloton get to the bottom of Hotakam. So a very different stage, much more difficult and much more difficult to control the yellow jersey. It's gonna be another wild day in the mountains. So stand by for the start proper. Le départ réel, le départ réel donné à 13h36, 13h36 de la 18e étape de la 109e édition du Tour de France. Une étape entre Lourdes et Otakam, 143,2 km à parcourir aujourd'hui. 140 coureurs en course, 140 coureurs dans le peloton. Trois n'ont pas son le 62, le 62, Immanuel Erviti, Bovistar, le 82, le 82, Damiano Caruso, Bahrain Victorious, et le 191, 191, Chris Broom, Israel, premier tech. Il y a un virage à droite euh, au kilomètre 1,2, Prudence. Le start, le start of the stage at uh, 137, 137, the stage 18 of the Tour de France between Lourdes and Otakam. 143.2 kilometers of racing today and 140 riders at the start three non-starters number 62 Arviti number 82 Caruso number 191 Chris Bruce so we head there, 140 riders have taken the start and immediately, and you may, if you speak French, you may have heard the race director, Christian Prudhomme, as he waved the yellow flag and said, le départ est donné, he also said, an attack immediately from the green jersey, Van Aert. We'll just show you the riders who didn't start. The bottom three, Viti Caruso and Froome, and Fabio Fellini, he, was, uh, he had, uh, didn't finish yesterday at the 17th stage. So we're down to 140, Bob, going into the last day in the Pyrenees. Now, what do you make of this attack? Nielsen Paulus with him, by the way. Sorry, Nielsen. 303 miles left to go, 140 riders remain, and there are six climbs left in the race. Only four teams now are complete. Well, you see Wout Van Aert in the green jersey going absolutely all in right from the start. Pretty shocking for the whole peloton. Maybe they're not ready for these kind of accelerations this early in the morning. But I think that he wants to get further up the road, maybe hook up with Jonas Vingigo. He was dropped pretty early in the mountains. I was surprised about that. Second to last climb yesterday. So I don't think Wout is riding as well in the mountains as maybe he would like to be. But if he gets over the first two climbs in front of the chasing peloton, that is a huge advantage for Jonas before the final climb of the Hotakam. But look at this now. He's still in the move, and he's split the group again here. Shockman on the front. Nealand's pulling through. This might be a different The Wolf thing. is there. This could be a much more serious group and a quick step rider. Been a while since the quick step team has been competitive. It's been since stage two that they got a stage win with Fabio Jakobsen. He's been having a very tough time in the mountains. Barely made the time limit. Very poignant. 17 seconds inside of the time limit yesterday, Phil. His teammates were at the finish line and cheered him all the way across. Oh, that's a flat tire, that, Bob. That is a horrible Good. time oh. to have a flat tire when it's Wout Van Aert is being chased by the whole peloton. Adrien Petit was the rider there. 
And the peloton in full cry again. They're going to push us right up on our schedule again today. But this man is on a mission. Come and join me, boys, but come and do the work. And if you don't do it quick enough, I'll do it for you. Great asset, Lichtenson from the DSM squad to Roman Bardet yesterday was in a very similar position in the breakaway earlier in the stage and helped Bardet get back into the frame in the GC after having a terrible day the first day in the Pyrenees. Max Schachmann tried to get across. That was a failure, <laughs> so he's coming back to the field, but still some riders trying to get to the breakaway. 20 seconds to the peloton from the breakaway, and unless they shut it down, that's it is not over yet for the breakaway, and still teams and riders, including Kofidis, they might want to put some riders on the front, try to get Simon Geschke across to this group. Otherwise, that team was most likely going to lose the polka dot jersey. Well, this is the doctor attending an accident which has just happened with Niels Akoff here, back in the village of Biel. Rather bizarre crash as they were down amongst the convoy of following cars. So he's come up to the doctor's car. The other rider involved in the situation was Jack Bauer, the rider on Team Bike Exchange, Jayco. The peloton, by the way, is now 34 seconds behind a group of 34 riders up front. But uh, the confusion is rife. And that's the uh, little bit of a spray they put on. It's a cold spray to try and kill the pain. Now we can show you what happened. Take a look at this. We're in the town of Biel, Bob. Just in front of this crash by Jack Bauer is another crash by Akoff. Both of them getting tangled up with the press motorbikes that were in this chase at the very worst possible time. No need for them to be there trying to improve their position while Jack Bauer and Niels Akoff were trying to get back on terms in the peloton. Jack Bauer is certainly not happy. My gosh. Is this the first Tour de France you've driven in? Well, he said, my gosh, is this the first Tour de France you've driven in? He casually goes back to the spectator who was holding his bike for him. I mean, the Commissar directs where the motorbikes with the press and the cameraman can be. And so presumably he was allowed to go through. But if you see it's going to be so narrow and the team cars are next to you, you have to break because riders are coming through at a furious rate. So you always have to be aware of the riders you've passed and the riders you might pass. I, my estimation, the moto driver should have been on the brakes before that pinch point and not made Jack Bauer crash into the UAE car. And both of those riders will be back to the team doctor's car. One of the most discouraging things that I experience in the Tour de France is when I'm healing from road rash, <laughs> I've already been cut up and fall on those cuts again. It happens a lot, and it's really heartbreaking, and Jack Bauer can be forgiven for being very upset with uh, the way that transpired. Just bad luck at the wrong time. It happens, but, uh, and, you know, to be honest, Phil, it, it's pretty amazing that it do, does not happen a lot more often. Wout van Aert on the front here, and he's just gone under the banner. We can take a look at that. It was literally 30 seconds ago. Nobody really challenged him. Somebody tried, but they learned the lesson pretty quickly. And another 20 points for Wout van Aert. Well, he's already the winner of this competition, so he's now just building on his points and maybe taking a shot at the record of Peter Sagan of 477 total points. Well, Simon Gesher on the left, Quinn Simmons is the right in second place. This is the situation, 64 points, Gesker, but that is possible to be bridged by Vingago and Pogaccia today if they can score. Uh, so we'll just see Nielsen Powell is still in there as well. Today on the Coldo Beast, maximum points on any big climb. It's 20 for an outside category, uh, right down to eighth place for two. He needs some big points, Bob. He has to go really well on this climb. There's a big peloton in front of him. He couldn't quite make it over, Geschke, that is, throughout the early miles of the stage. Every time he went, the peloton chased. And then every time he didn't go, <laughs> some riders went up the road. So he kept missing it. So he can be forgiven for being a little bit tired and missing the split to the breakaway. So this is going to be a much taller order. Should have a, at least one teammate to try to guide him back to the front of the breakaway. He's got almost 11 miles of climbing to do that. 
but he's got to be a lot better in the hills than he was on the flat rows leading into the first climb. Today is the big test for a lot of riders in the Tour de France, some to stay in and some to win the Tour. Now, this is Louis Menkes here moments ago, and he's, he's applying the uh, pressure here, Bob, uh, and he could steal the King of the Mountains jersey if he wins all the points. Also high up in the overall, so we'll see how the peloton allows Menkes 25 points behind Simon Geschke, uh, but 20 at the top of this next climb, and Louis Menkes riding very well in this Tour de France and one of the best climbers in the world. Still on the steady toil of the climb of the Col de Beast today, taking us up to 1,700 metres. This is the group on the road, Seb Kuss just taking on food on the left. Geschke here has uh, slipped here because he has not gone with the leaders on the attack and he could lose his lead in the King of the Mountains, at least uh, to uh, Giacconi. And the battle to win the Tour de France right before our cameras right now. The teammates of the yellow jersey are doing the pacemaking. They're 253 behind the leaders on the road. They have no interest in those leaders at all. Uh, we're nearly at the top of HC, which is the Col de Risque. Then we've got a little kicker down and up again. Drop into the valley, the all category. Climb outside category. Just look at that, the dizzy slopes of the Col of Beach. It's just as well the riders can't see what we can see from the helicopter. The finish just around that corner there. Beautiful shot. Incidentally, the helicopter pilot got an official warning yesterday from the organization for flying too low over the riders and causing turbulence. Uh, so he's got to be careful today. Mankey's st still trying to get back to the lead group. Joe Dombrowski in the Astana. Turquoise colors just behind Mankey's. And Chris Hamilton is the DSM rider, if I'm not mistaken. And he was the last rider to slip the bonds of the peloton and get across to these two chasers. And they are trying to catch back into the green jersey group that's at the tip of the spear, way up the road. Got yeah. some work to do, but not impossible. And, and Louis Mankey's is yeah. putting some daylight in. Man. Yeah, he's a very light little climber and he's looking for points too but he's got a bit of jo job in hand at the moment not going to catch the leaders before we go over the top here Madwa, wow what a ride he's had the last couple of days helping David Gaudu stay in contention yesterday and now giving ice pack and water bottle to Thibaut Pino so what a ride by Valentin Madwa. Well, Group Armour, the French haven't won at a stage of the Tour de France yet, but they'd like the lead in something. Uh, this is Menkes, but he is uh, just under a minute back of the top of the climb. Hamilton's come back to his side in the black there, but it looks as though Joe Dabrowski has gone there for the moment. Paulus was here as well. He also was dropped. Ten seconds to a small chase, not sure the composition of that, but I believe it contains Jungles, Patrick Conrad, Gorka Izagira, Valka Molina, and Andreas Akron. These are the points at the top, 20, 15, 12. To give himself a chance, Giacconi needs to scoop that 20. Yes, it certainly would be advantageous. Fourth wheel is Thibaut Pino. Lutsenko third wheel, if I'm not mistaken, but Wout Van Aert leading the climbers. <laughs> I don't think there's anything he can't do on a bicycle, and this is Louis Mankey's deficit. And when he looks up the road, he can see Wout Van Aert. That's got to be pretty daunting. And even the, in spite of how strong a climber Louis Mankey's is, Wout Van Aert is an absolute monster. Flags flying there on the right of the road. Most of the people in the area have come across from Spain.
200 meters to the top. Ciccone is itching to start the sprint in second place. And he's coming now. He's third back at the riders from FTJ, inviting them almost to come. But this is a formality, Bob. He gets maximum points on the top. And that is big trouble for Simon Geschka. Moves right in within a few points. Goes up to... Just inside, just a few points behind Simon Geschke. This is the chase group with Louis Menkes. Won't get any KOM points. Surprised that Thibaut Pino didn't put in more of an effort. Maybe Thibaut Pino is saving himself for a stage win. But Thibaut Pino also will get 15 points. So Judy Ciccone moves within three points of Simon Geschke. And he's got another category one, not far away from the bottom of the descent of the obese. 10 points up for grabs on the category one. Eight, six, four, and two up for grabs. Now this Bobo Vingago, this is the virtual overall on the road. No change in the top three, but Louis Menkes has moved up into fourth and he's only 24 seconds behind Geraint Thomas. Uh, this could be, well, it's without doubt at the moment, the best tour the young South Africans ever had. Uh, and he's coming back too. He had a few a few uh, blank years over the last few years. Well, keep your eye on what Ineos does about Geraint Thomas's podium position. Don't be surprised if they go to the front, if Menkes continues to get in the danger ground. This is Tom Pidcock, 25, been dropped by the lead group, but still in front of the chasers, led by Nathan Van Hoyedonk. Geraint Thomas is in that group, but he's got to be a little bit worried about Louis Menkes for the podium at this point, just a few seconds behind. These are the leaders, and we're just starting the climb of the Col du Spandel. We've never seen this climb before. It's 10.3 kilometers long. It used to be thought too dangerous to use, but the department here has totally resurfaced the climb, and the road is now deemed to be safe. And what it's done, Bob, is give the rider a total different approach now onto the mountain of Otakam. And you have to have a lot more respect for the final climb of the day, because the obese before the Otakam used to have a long valley before. It could be a lot more aggressive and not pay for it on the Otakam. But that's a completely different scenario than we're seeing today. The Spondel might tell a totally different tale than the Hodacom has done in the past. Oh, Here, we, here go. we go. The big attack. Tommy Pogaccio is going big. Yes, he is indeed, and it's gone because he's gone round his teammate. Brandon immediately drops away. This is an attack. It had to come on this climb. He's got to make time over Vingago, Bob, but he is right locked into him. Vingago right on the wheel. Sepp Kuss worrying for Jumbo Visma. Just dropped there. Tish Benut and Wild Van Aert still up the road. Didn't take long to, Chris, to catch Chris Hamilton for that acceleration by Teddy Pagaccia. Nairo Quintana and Garrett Thomas trying to get back to the wheel of the white and yellow jerseys. He may well have used the, the fact he could see Hamilton. A little bit up the road is Louis Menkes, and he's used him as a carrot. But once again, the yellow jersey was ready and waiting for that move. But now it really is one on one. The two leaders have got no teammates left around them. And it's a pretty brilliant plan by Yumbo, maybe realizing that Sepp Kuz couldn't quite make the tempo when Tati Pogaccia attacks. So they put Wout Van Aert, who can do just about anything, and Teach Benut in the front. So they would probably hook up with the yellow jersey over the top of this next climb. Brandon did all that he could do, after, especially after yesterday, and Tate immediately went on the offensive. That's what he has to do. Thomas, no answer, nor Sepp Kuss. But Tate, without any teammates, has to do this. Sepp Kuss trying to get back on terms with his team leader, Jonas Vingegu. Yeah, he's just out of our picture on the left there. He's actually there, Sepp Kuss now trying to get back up because he's desperate to help uh, Vingegu. But uh, Pagacha just got his own little tempo. He's concentrating. He's the sort of man who can kick again, and Vingago knows that. This is the big day for Vingago. Lose today, he could lose the Tour de France. He is stuck like glue to the back wheel of the white jersey. Vingago, all he has to do is stay on that wheel. Sepkus might catch, but he definitely has allies up the road, and if he needs them, he can call them back. Tade may be a little bit better on the descents, but he's going to have to take big chances. And Jonas has proved to be very good descender as well. So Tade Pogaccia going from distance without anybody up the road. So advantage Jumbo Visma at the moment, as long as Jonas can stay on the wheel of 
Tadej Pogacar. That's got to be a little demoralizing for Tadej Pogacar to have not just the yellow jersey, yeah, but also his top climbing lieutenant. Well, he's got rid of everybody, and he looks like he's easing back a little bit now because uh, Vingago took a look at him. He's going to have a drink. He knows Seb Kuss has returned, and he's gone to the back. So a bit of time out for him. Uh, still the same gap remains. They're proving to be inseparable. You know, we can go back 40 years to see a battle like this for first and second place. And Jonas Vingago got a big advantage on the Col de Granon, but it stayed the same except for a time bonus yesterday. And great riding by the yellow jersey, and that's what it takes. You know, the pressure is not as great on Jonas as it is on Tade. Tade has to get time back, and all Jonas has to do is follow. He's got a teammate with him and two up the road, whereas Tade Pogaccia doesn't have anybody up the road. In a normal situation, if he had some teammates, they could have gone in the early breakaway and assist in this attack if it's to come from Tade Pogaccia. I'm not sure if he has the legs, Phil. Just watching down, that's Dylan Van Baal on the right here, teammate of Geraint Thomas, and Dylan was in the breakaway. He might do his best to go and help out here. Uh, the Kazakhstan rider there, nope. just, uh, just uh, pouring some water. That's Ryub Ryub Ryubushenko. Ryubushenko was in the breakaway. He's going the wrong way. I'm not too sure why he's uh, putting water over a rival, but, you know, technically, that's against the rules. So the judges may say something about that. Helping another rider from a rival team, simply not allowed. Number 21, Geraint Thomas, the diesel engine, has ground his way back up to this express group for the moment. And there's an attack gone, and that's Pogacar gone, came out of the shadows and just jumped and immediately hooked on by the yellow jersey. And so the two are locked in together, and Geraint Thomas, who just come up, he'll be in the rears again. Now, he came from much lower down. He tried not to advertise that attack, but Vingo doesn't miss. Look at this now. A few riders back. Tade goes. Jonas Vingo goes straight on the wheel. He sees that. A little bit choppier pedaling than I've seen him responding to those attacks by, by Tade Pogaccia. And Sepp Kuss riding great back on the wheel of his leader. Again, another attack by, by Tade Pogaccia. He's playing the part, but he's not delivering the power, Paddy, but Taddy Pagaccia, I'm afraid. Uh, Seb Kuss reacted to that, and he's been hurt earlier on. So I suspect that wasn't really a hard attack by Taddy. And Seb Kuss starting to feel because better look at and this. better. Seb's going to give him a go now. Seb maybe Kuss not. going back to the front just to do the tempo. And maybe Jonas would, as long as Seb is feeling up to it, not respond to the attacks and let... Sepp just bring him gradually back to the wheel if Tade Pogaccia attacks again. Well, Pogaccia very much on a 2-1 two -two situation here. Two teammates. And he's going again. Almost advertised that one. And he's at four kilometers to go. And Vingago rises to the occasion. Sepp Kuz can't. Another long sprinting effort on the climb here of the Col de Spandel. A climb we've never seen in the Tour de France before, but it'll be in the history books now for a great battle. These narrow roads were deemed unusable, and uh, the department of the Haute Pyrenees have resurfaced the roads uh, to make the descent safe, because it was a very dangerous descent. Godou and Quintana trying to get back on terms. That might take some doing. Tade Pogaccia flying, still aggressive. Still three and a half k's of this climb and another almost 14 kilometers of the last climb. So plenty of climbing left. Sepp Kuss back on terms and Sepp prudently not responding to those attacks. And I'm not sure if it's the best tactic. And I think Jonas might be advised, ask Sepp how he's feeling and follow his wheel for a while. And Garrett Thomas clawing his way back. There goes Garrett Thomas. Well, they, were, they wouldn't be expecting that because Vingago was having a drink. He's not reacted to Thomas. And why should he react to Thomas? This is a great counter move because there's a big gap. Thomas has gone after his podium because he knows Menkes has moved up into third. If I'm Sepp Kuss, I let Garrett Thomas go as far up the road as he wants to as long as it doesn't get to five minutes. He's 4.56 behind Jonas Fingico, and let's see if Sepp Kuz can't grind his way slowly back to the wheel of <laughs> Geraint Thomas. You're a bit Thomas. ambitious there, Bob. I don't think Geraint's going to get five minutes. No. <laughs> so that's why Jonas didn't have to panic in that situation. Yes. Just let Sepp Kuz do the work. 
And Tadi Pogac is starting to run out of climbing miles to attack the yellow jersey and get any sort of daylight that he absolutely needs just inside of two minutes, 20 seconds behind the man in yellow. So this is Jumbo Visma. Offering uh, Wout van Aert water, and he'll tell them at the same time what is happening behind. And as we go behind, he has gone again. This is yet another, and this is a serious attack. Look at the acceleration now. This is a big attack by Tadej Pogaccia, but Vingigo is up to it for the moment. Not quite as quick on the wheel. Let's see if Taddy can't go again. He might have to do. They've gone right up to Garrett Thomas. He did another kick. He's wiped it. This is Menkes. He's finally got up to Menkes now. And uh, Vingogo looks across, but he's still there. Menkes going to try and get on the back of these two at the moment. They've immediately come up and passed Geraint Thomas. Julio Ciccone looking for King oh of the Mountain goodness. points. He might not get any. Now that Tade and Jonas are there, they might be contesting the po polka dots also. There's Tadej Pogaccia putting real pressure on Jonas Vingigo. This is going to be a big effort. And this, he's still continuing. That was a very serious effort. It blew away Sepkus immediately. They've come up to Louis Menkes. Remember that they're still over two minutes behind the front runners on the road. Those three riders we have seen. But now there's uh, another two jerseys in with a chance of taking the lead in the King of the Mountains, both yellow and white. They caught Geraint Thomas. He settled in and he's grinding his way back to the wheeler of Louis Menkes. Jonas Vingigo might have only one teammate left at the top of this second to last climb. Wout van Aert. Bob Jungle. Bob Jungle strong. And Wout van Aert already saved the tour for Vingigo at least once on stage number five on the cobbles when Vingigo had so many mechanical problems. It was Van Aert that brought him back to within a few seconds of Tadej Pogaccia. And Wout van Aert still up the road. And Wout now only about a kilometer to climb. So he should be able to go over the top in front of Pogaccia and Vingigo, his teammate. This man has been absolutely amazing. Attacking at the zero kilometer sign today. Uh, van Aert, and he's still at it now on the climb. The big mountains of the Pyrenees, always decisive in the Tour de France. Steep grades, hot weather, horrible pavement. Chip and seal just saps your energy. Walt Van Aert has such a surplus, it's not a problem as he closes in on the King of the Mountains point. Yeah, well, he won the uh, sprint. Well, it wasn't really a sprint. The green jersey sprint in Laurens. He was third over the top of the Col de Bisque. And it looks like he's going to be first because he's not taking any chances at all. He's now first over the top of the Col de Spandel. Absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> I think riding, he's sprinting for KOM points. <laughs> what an impressive rider. Let's see if Pogaccia try to get a gap. There's a couple of other stragglers. Finger go, food and water. Food and water nicely taken to clean as a whistle. Doesn't need the food, so probably feeling pretty strong. If he was starting to weaken, he would have probably taken the food on board and needed that for the descent. Let's see if Tadi Pogaccia doesn't ride very aggressively. Fourth and fifth on the road. I believe that's Carlos Verona in the dark blue. I want to say that's Lutsenko in the turquoise of Astana. These are the riders that were in between Wild Van Aert and the yellow jersey, his own teammate, and the white jersey. Right there, still a lot of climbing to do on this and the fall and the following climb. The hope to come to come. But he's pushing it again to the top. Now, is he going to do a, a, a descent? Because remember, the descent, we understand, is narrow and very, very twisty. He's going to test now Vingago, perhaps on the way down the mountain instead of up it. We'll find out. It's been totally resurfaced for the race uh, because they wanted to use this particular mountain for the first time this year. Oh, oh no! You speak, oh, my goodness me, that... Um, Let's have a look at that again because, thank you, Steve, that's, uh, I think we just highlighted what you were saying there. We'll check it out. Uh, but it pushed him all the way. Now, what's the front wheel? Oh, it's the back wheel. Now, that is amazing because the, it does like it has been chipped and sealed, which is not good unless it was done a few weeks ago when it has chance to be trodden in. But uh, we've seen it's loose on the surface. Remember the hot sun, Bob? It releases the, uh, the tar. Of Absolutely. The and staying on Tadi Pogaccia's wheel is going to be very Ooh. tough for Vingigo, especially after that near uh. miss. This could have been absolute disaster for the yellow jersey. The yellow jersey bike riding. gives you wings, and sometimes it saves your Tour de France. Wow. Incredible that he kept that up. Got a, 
the foot out and just barely saved it. And now let's see how oh, Taddy Pogaccia. Oh, that's another that's shot of it, I hope. From a, the helicopter, <laughs> yes. So Taddy Pogaccia now will know about that, but Vingago fighting back. Let's see if Wild Van Art doesn't wait and try to guide Jonas all the way down this descent. That's where Wild Van Art could could do a, a huge talk, work for the yellow jersey. His tour could have ended right there. Absolutely. And uh, this is the, the other tactic of Pogaccia. He's going to take him down this mountain and test him the full. You've got to be a complete all-round bike rider. We know that Pogaccia is, but he's a little matter of 2 minutes, 18 seconds behind the yellow jersey. He's testing him in every department today. Oh, but Jonas Vingago has recovered well. It's a surprise to me that he didn't damage his tires there, yeah. or at least hopefully he didn't. And Tade Pogaccia goes a little bit wide. What, what's happened to Pogaccia? Oh, oh no, no! What has happened there? It looked like he might have had a flat tire Well, fill. that's what I thought. Yeah. I thought exactly the same, Bob, the way he slowed and then fell. But he, look, he's up and running. He hasn't. Pushing it too hard to put pressure on the yellow jersey did not pay off in that circumstance for Pogaccia. He took the line wrong. He took the line completely wrong, and he thought he corrected it, but he got in the loose. He got in the loose gravel, and that was it. Well, he luckily he had slowed way down before he fell down. Looked like he landed on the grass, and now Jonas wow. Vingago. Let's see if he doesn't take it a little well, bit well, easier I think at the we'll see, rest of the descent. We'll make that one all on the descent, Bob. I yeah, think. I think and you're see right. See how we continue, <laughs> because but this one was much worse for Pogaccia. He was the dictator. Well, now it's worrying yeah, for Pogaccia. A bit more cautious, too. Yeah, he's got to really you know press what? himself just to catch up. Hey, listen, listen, he's waiting. He's waiting for him. He won't race away for a fallen rider. Uh, well, that might... This that, is that amazing. Might, let's see if Tade doesn't desist on his attacking. Well, no, no, please. You don't want to be too nice. <laughs> Come on, guys. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this is amazing. I can't recall any of this in my 50 Tours de France. I really can't. But you can see the ripped shorts on the left side of the leg of Tade Pogaccia. He's called for his service car. I'm still not uh, unconvinced. He may not have a softening tyre here. Yeah. But uh, he's on the back wheel of the yellow, who's uh, clearly not going to attack him while he's limping like this. An incredible, incredible show of sportsmanship. We're descending to the last rendezvous in the Pyrenees now, which is the climb of Otakam. Goodness knows what will happen because this Tour de France, something happens every day. There's a UAE car finally coming into the frame. It took him a long time to get around all the yeah. dropped riders, taking some chances, trying to get through. But Tadej Pogaccia definitely needs some, some service. Let's see if he doesn't get on his spare bike immediately. If he can do that before Tish Benut and Sepp Kuss catch up, and then he'll be back on turns with Jonas Vingago. But then Jonas will have two more teammates. And Wout van Aert, don't forget, still up the road. And on this rather dangerous descent, Thibaut Pino looks as though he might have unhitched at the front here from the two other pacemakers. He's, he's timed at five seconds. Let's see what they're saying. Right, changing bottles, which means they're not changing bikes, that's for sure. And while we're watching all this, uh, note that uh, Naira Quintana's group has dropped 3 minutes 25 on the leaders. So he's losing time here at the moment. Thomas is in front just... And uh, I can hear warnings on the race radio about the uh, nasty bends are coming up. This is Tade Pogaccia coming through the town of Argeles Gazost. Just take a look at this as he comes into the town. There was plenty of warnings about this, but he used every inch of that corner. Oh my goodness, he just about got round. As far as we know, everybody has in the leading group, but there was warnings on the radio about that. Sepp and Tish Benut now back into the front group after all the drama to Tade Pogaccia and Wild Van Aert up the road, Jumbo Visma looking to be in a commanding position tactically at the moment. And we just hit the start of the climb. Oh, steady on, Tebow. Not the time to start putting stuff in your back pocket because the slope suddenly gets up. This is 13.6 kilometers. It ends at the finishing line, three and a half thousand feet of elevation. And the start of the King of the Mountains, uh, the overall 64 for Geska and 61 for Jacone. They didn't score. 
in the last the one. Neither did Vingegaard or Thibaut Pino. So 20 points for the man who comes up to the top in 20, the first 15, position. 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, and 2. Jonas needs 12 points, so if he gets first or second on the stage, he will go into the lead. If he gets third, he will get fourth, or he will tie, excuse me. Simon Geschke, so his defiance well, let, might work out in his favor. Let me tell you, Vingago, Pino, Van Aert, and Pogaccia could all take the lead in the King of the Mountains if they get those 20 points. The three musketeers, three riders who survived a huge breakaway today, and they could still survive this to the summit. The Yellow Jersey group still a minute 12 behind. Walt Van Aert always been regarded as one of the fastest men in the Tour de France in the sprints, Phil. To see him at the front yeah. on this type of stage, this deep into the Tour, is absolutely astounding. What a ride by Walt Van Aert. There'll be a discussion one day as to whether he can win the Tour de France. Absolutely. He'll have to adopt and be on a different team, I think, but that's the story for another day. Bingo go. There goes Wild attacking from the front wow. group. Wow, look at that. So that's much, incredible. Oh so my much God. me thinking he didn't look too good, Bob. That is an incredible acceleration, and they weren't expecting it, I don't think. Martinez trying to react. Thibaut Pino also trying to react. A huge effort, but I think this one, they, at least Martinez, is going to get back on to Van Van Aert. Going that for was the, incredible. Going for the stage win, and I don't see him slowing down, regardless of what the yellow jersey might need. Danny Martinez done well to close the gap on this flat section before it kicks up again. 11 seconds, they're inching closer. They've climbed back throughout this race very steadily from around four or five minutes back to within nine seconds of catching the leaders on the road. Van Aert has looked over his shoulder. He's seen two members of his team joining him. That's three against one now. Martinez looking for the back wheel. I'm not sure he can take it the way he is. He's going to give it a go. I'm not sure he can. He has not. He's been dropped, Bob. I think that Sepp's saying, Walt, well, you take it, I'm done. <laughs> and Walt looks like pretty fresh. And Walt now making the tempo for Jonas Vingigo. 3.2 miles still to climb. And now Van Aert, the man that broke away at the zero kilometer, we thought to put the pawn up front to wait for the king to arrive. He's now arrived. There's the black bitch, we're into it again, then we'll come into the red a little bit easier towards the summit. One of the most exciting bike riders in the business, and Pogaccia has got dropped. Pogaccia has got dropped. The Tour de France, I think, has just ended here. It might be the crash he had, he might have hurt himself, but this incredible man, Wout van Aert, who broke away at the zero kilometre, been joined by his team captain, has now taken him away to victory in the Tour de France. Well, van Aert is on fire. Nobody would predict that he would be dropping Tade Pogaccia on the Hotekan, but that's what we're seeing right now. This is Tade Pogaccia concentrating he's still sitting second in the tour de france he still won the last two tours he's at four kilometers now to the summit it doesn't get easier this has been the most brilliant battle between two of the greatest young exciting cyclists we've seen make it three will include van art And, and now he, Van Aert has just locked up there. He's now launched his man, his team leader, to ride alone to the summit here in the yellow jersey. All the great winners of the Tour de France have won alone. Nobody going to stop him now, Bob. Three and a half kilometres to the summit. The man that used to pack fish for a living at 21 years of age is now setting his sights on winning the Tour de France in Paris on Sunday. Well, Van Aert, uh, come back to the white jersey, though. If he stays on the wheel, <laughs> add a little insult to injury. Dottie Pogaccia going to try to struggle to get second on the stage, but he's continuing to lose time to the best rider in the Tour de France. This man, Jonas Vingago, in solo glory to the finish line. His second stage win and a consolidation of his time ahead of Dottie Pogaccia in the yellow jersey standings.
The crowd has caught tour fever now. They're seeing a yellow jersey stamp his mark on the Tour de France as he rides clear to victory, his second stage victory, of course, and could well be the one that on Sunday seals his first Tour de France and a first win for Denmark since 1996. The face of Tadej Pogacar is 42 seconds back now of Vingago. So looking at Vingago as he makes his way up, he was a fish packer at 21 years of age. He went and lived abroad to try and be a cyclist. He turned out amazing times on the Strava and then the Jumbo signed him. They saw the promise of this man, and today he's doing enough to win the Tour de France. Revelation in last year's Tour de France, confirming that and more in this year's the dominant rider in the mountains of the Tour, and way ahead of a rider we didn't expect to see chasing. We thought he'd be attacking Tare Pogacar. Flag of Denmark and the Cross of St. Olaf flying high there. He has gone from a total unknown in Denmark to an absolute, probably, their number one superstar in sport. Godou's making a move here, and Martinez, can he answer the attack by David Godou? He wants more time. Comes up behind Sepkus, Lutsenko. But two and a half minutes ahead of that is this man. He's not far to go now. He's looking for the kilometre. I think this is the first time we've seen pain on his face, but it really should be converted into total determination at one kilometre to go. He wants every second, and he's going to take it. 47 seconds to Bogaccia. 1,000 yards of racing between Vingigo and a stunning stage win. Bogaccia will never give up. Martinez trying to save the third place of number 21, Geraint Thomas. This is Adam Yates just passing through. He's only alongside Nairo Quintana. Wow. Nairo having a very tough day, his last day in the Pyrenees. Last few hundred meters for Jonas Vingigo, going from strength to strength in the mountains. Just a few hundred meters left between the yellow jersey and a big consolidation of his advantage. At the kilometer for Pogaccia, the two great men of the Tour de France split by 700 meters. <laughs> 500 meters. This is the day he knew he would either win the tour or lose it. I think he's won it. How fitting is it? The Tour de France starting for the first time in Denmark. Three weeks almost to the day since he started the Tour. He's now looking like winning the Tour de France. He's still got to go to Paris, but this stage win in yellow, his second. He won in the Alps, and now he's just about to win in the Pyrenees. A 
virtuoso performance there by Jonas Vingago. He has won his second stage of the Tour de France and he's won it in the yellow jersey. Tadej Pogacar with his unzipped pull uh, jersey for the second time in this Tour de France, something he never did. He was under pressure all day, he fell off, but he's still going to finish second and he won the last two tours. I think that's a pretty good defence. Never stopped losing hope, only yesterday he said he was still optimistic he could win the Tour. But he was beaten by a team not by just one man. Let's have a look then. The stage has got the yellow jersey of the Tour de France. Beats four hours for the ride today. A Jonas Vingago, Taddy Pogacar just outside those four hours. Second, Wout van Aert third, Geraint Thomas fourth, and David Goudou, who always fights back. Jonas Vingago now leads by 3.26. Garen Thomas securely in the third. A little bit of movement there at four and five. Gadu and Quintana flip flop as Quintana drops down to five. And now for the yellow jersey. <laughs> On the podium, the president of the French Republic, Emmanuel Macron. Yannis Vingegaard getting set for the final three stages. Will there be any final twists? He hopes not. He has been the strongest rider throughout this race.